So this is a uh, engineering system. We are having the family of engineering products. This Exologic is one of the part of engineering systems. And Exologic is basically designed for enterprise Java based applications exclusively for middleware applications. That's Oracle Fish middleware applications as well. And Oracle Exologic is an integrated hardware and a software. It's been designed to provide a complete platform for wide range application types and widely varied application workloads. So Exologic enables customers to develop their customized environment to support all consolidated end-to-end -end applications. So this, uh, this Exologic is having the greatest features which is providing the highest performance. Now how can we achieve the highest performance, highest reliability and the scalability? So in the 45 minutes through session, we will be, uh, the session will help us to get the overview of the system components and how we are achieving the performance by the elastic cloud. So this is the program agenda. So we are going to discuss about the exologic components, that is the compute nodes and the exabus network and storage. So these are all the components that are being integrated within the exologic. So we will uh, we'll be going to see all these components and how flexible towards the implementation and the maintenance of Elastic Cloud. And the next one, how to achieve the breakthrough on application performance and scalability with Elastic Cloud. How do we achieve the application performance with the help of this Elastic Cloud? What integration techniques has been enabled only on the Exologic for particular applications? So we are going to see that part and how to reduce IT cost, complexity and the risk through integrated platform. So by integrating all these components, how can we reduce the IT cost? and how can we reduce the complexity as well. So we'll be going to see, uh, this is the program agenda which we are going to discuss. So this is the present organization, what enterprise IT business demands. So the IT needs, we need to provide the quality of service within the time with the less cost. So this is the formula, what the Oracle has approached, what the Oracle has proved and has been developed the engineering systems to provide the quality of service within the time, within the within the less responsive time, with the less cost, within the, uh, with the less maintenance and the complexity. So how can we achieve this formula? This formula can be achieved by exologic, exologic and that is the elastic cloud. Normally, if I want to deploy one application, therefore, I am reaching different vendors to support and host my application. If an application is, if an application is hosted on uh, or it's a people soft. So therefore, I need to approach for Oracle for the application and I need to reach a different vendor for the operating system. I need to reach a different vendor for HP that will be providing the servers and for the networking, I need to reach a different vendor Cisco and for storage, I need to reach different vendor NetApp. So therefore, I am reaching for sim to support single application. I am reaching different vendors to integrate I am reaching different vendors. So therefore, to integrate all these vendors and to achieve the highest performance, which is the most complex situation. Now, how can we put dot to all these integration techniques that by the customization? Yes, the Oracle has come up with a solution that they are providing the integration of all these components, the storage, the, red, the network, the compute nodes, and the networking. So they are integrating all these components and they are providing in a single box. That is, this box is called as a exologic stack. And either it can be called as a stack or it can be called as a rack. And by integrating all these components into a single rack, so they have tuned it and they have optimized the techniques. So within the integration, they have developed a lot of customization techniques which give the maximum performance. No. How can I reduce my complexity? Yes. If my application is on different components, therefore, the managing of each and every component within the data center, which leads to the data, uh, data center cost. So therefore, the horizontal space within the data center is being growing. And the cost for the IT data center cost is growing more. So therefore, how can I reduce my data center cost? Yes, it can be reduced by the horizontal space can be reduced by keeping all the components in a vertical fashion within the exologic box by integrating each and everything. So, which doesn't occupy more than 5 square foot. 
So almost like by this, I have reduced my IT data center cost and the complexity and achieving the, what we require. So this is the problem what we faced earlier and the Oracle has came up with a solution that they have given with engineering systems. So we are having uh, we are having multiple engineering systems that is we are having Excel data for the database and for uh, for middleware applications we are having Excel logic and if we integrate Excel logic and Excel data that is called a super cluster. So in the same way we are having the standalone ZFS servers that is known as ZFS3 that is called as the external standalone ZFS servers. So these are all the uh, engineering systems that are available in a, from the Oracle. So let's see in the hardware of each and every component. What the uh, what uh, type of hardware component and what optimization techniques do we have uh, in this particular Elastic Cloud suite? Okay, uh, from the year of 2010. We have the different versions released by Oracle. The first version released by Oracle is X22. And later on they come up with the next version available from the Oracle is X32. And the next version is X42. So the present right now in the market uh, from the Oracle, we are having X42 is the newest version and which is which can be available in the two configurations, high capacity and the high performance. So let's see uh, what all the components do we have in Elastic Cloud. Yes, this is the total uh, Elastic Cloud and if you open the front cabinet door, so the internal view looks like this. So these are all the components within the single Elastic stack. In the total stack, uh, all the components are integrated. Now let's see each, into each and every component. So this is the computer tab. So computer tire in the sense means it's a compute node which is called as a compute node. Compute node in the sense means like standalone physical server which is equivalent to. So we are having two sockets and for each compute node is having two Intel Xenon IBA bridge processors. Each processor is having 12 cores. So therefore 12 into 2 almost like 24 core processors per each and every physical compute node and 512 GB of RAM which can be expandable up to 512 GB from 256 GB of RAM. And we are having 800 GB of SSD node, which is called SSD in the sense solid state disk, which is not equivalent to normal disk. So the SSD disk is different, entirely different from normal HDD disk. It doesn't have any moving part internally. So therefore the performance from the disk level will be more. And we are having two SSD disk for each and every compute node which are configured in the method fashion to give the high availability in the failure of one disk. And we are having 720 cores in a full rack. So in a full rack we are having total 30 compute nodes which will give the 24 into 30 which will give to 720 cores in a full stack and pre-cabling for full rack is being done by Oracle itself. We need not to install, we need not to configure each and everything. So by default Oracle will configure by, the, by this itself and will provide to the customer. And these compute nodes will support either Oracle Linux or Oracle Solaris. So no other operating system can be installed on these engineering systems. Only Oracle Linux or Oracle Solaris. And the next one is the IO fabric that is the internal type of fabric which is called as a network. So this network, if we can see closely observe it, say we are having four gate, these are the switches, what we are seeing is called as a gateway switches. Totally I am having six gateway switches, four or four switches called as a InfiniBand gateway switches and one is called as a management switch and other one is called as spine switch. So each and every gateway switch is having its own importance and its own prioritization. And each and every switch is came up with a 40 GBPS IO PS per second. So the switches are configured in such a way that it gives a maximum performance and it has a speed of 40 GBPS per second. Now how it is achieving 40 GBPS speed? Therefore the gateway switches are achieving the 40 GB per speed with the help of HCA ports. So these are HCA in the sense means host channel adapters. So with the help of this host channel adapter, they are achieving, the switches are achieving the maximum performance with the help of these gateway switches. 
So each and every compute node and each and every component within the total entire XOR logic has two host channel adapter ports. Therefore, each and every port is being configured in an active passive configuration to achieve the highest performance. So the network, uh, the next part is the storage here. So within the single stack we are having the storage. So this storage is similar to NAS and SAN, but which is having the highest features, but maintaining this uh, storage will be very easier if you compare with NAS or SAN. And the replication of this storage is very easier when compared with other vendors. So I am having the capacity of 80 TB SAS disks and 6.4 TB of read cache and 2.292 TB of write cache. Then what is meant by this 80 TB of SAS disks? Yes. So this storage is having the disk shelf which, which can be configured in a mirrored fashion. So therefore even if one disk got failed, it can be replaced. So this is called as a this is called as a disk shelf which is having six rows and four columns equal to 24 disks. So manually we are having 24 disks which are configured in a mirrored fashion. And this disk shelf is being survived by two compute nodes. The upper part is called as a compute nodes which are called as storage heads and either can be called as controllers. So the, the total disk has been surviving the help of this disk heads. So the next one is the fault tolerance. Now each and every component within the total elastic cloud has been configured in a mirrored fashion. So if one component gets failed, the other component will come into existence and survive the total stack. Now I am having dual power distribution units. So the power, I am having the two power distribution units which are configured in the rare part of the elastic cloud. Even if one power distribution gets failed, the stack will get survived with the other power distribution unit. If both they get failed, therefore it will be the loss. Now in the same way for each and every component, I am having power supply. So it's like the SMPS in each and every standalone desktop. We are having two power supplies in each and every component. Here coming to the component is called as a compute nodes, network switches, storage system, management switch, compute nodes, and infinite spine switches. So these are all the components. Each and every component is having two, uh, two power supplies. Even if one power supply got failed, the particular component will get survived with the other. So I'm having M plus one fan cooling fan strategy. So therefore that to reduce the temperature that's been generating from the each and every component. So we are having the cooling fan strategy which cools the processors and total entire component. And we are having dual HCA ports as I told you earlier. So each and every component is having two HCA ports, one plus one. And redundant storage heads. So we are having two redundant storage heads here which will be working as an active, passive and which are configured in a in the cluster mode. And all our SSD disk and HDD ride. So the disk shelf are having four SSD disks and rest of the remaining are HDD, HDD disks. Yes. So these are the different flavors that are available uh, from the Oracle. That is eighth rack, quarter rack, half rack, full rack. Yes. So the difference between all these racks in the sense the the number of components in the eighth rack will be very less and then the, the number of components in the quarter rack will be increased from the eighth rack. Yes. Now let us see what are the components in the eighth rack. Yes, I am having only four compute nodes in the eighth rack and 96 cores totally and 1 TB of RAM and 80 TB of ZFS storage. So this is the storage expansion and the available configurations in the eighth rack. And in the quarter rack I am having eight compute nodes which is equivalent to 192 cores and the storage is having the capacity of 2 TB of RAM and 80 TB of storage. And in the half rack, it is having 16 compute nodes, which is equal to 384 cores. And the storage is having 40 TB of RAM and 80 TB of storage. In the same way, full rack is having 30 nodes, which is equal to 720 cores and 7.5 TB of storage RAM and 80 TB storage capacity. So these are the different flavors that are available from Oracle that the organization can purchase as per the needs and as per their uh, needs and once we purchase the 8th rack we can make it to, we can convert the 8th rack into either quarter, half or full rack 
by adding the number of components to the existing configuration. For example, if I purchase eight rack, therefore if my business grows, therefore I can add four more com compute nodes to make it as a quarter rack. And still if my business is growing, so therefore I can add some more compute nodes which can make it as a half rack to make the business to reach the business demands. So therefore I can increase the rack configurations and I can come up with a full rack. So if it is a full rack, therefore I cannot add any more compo components to the existing configuration. No. I can integrate, I, we can integrate the axiologic stacks with one another and engineering systems with one another up to eight axiologic systems. Yes, we can integrate up to eight axiologic systems that is called as a multi-rack. So maximum the maximum is 8 and the minimum is 1. Yes, then. So that, uh, that was the hardware configuration and then how can I configure the total elastic cloud? So, configuration of elastic cloud is in a very easy way. The installation, the configuration, the Oracle has implemented by single command. We need not to configure each and every component as we have the number of components in the total elastic cloud by seeing all those components, there is no need to get frightened. So all these components can be installed with a single command and with a single script. We need to fire the single script which will take over everything and configure all the components. Now, what script do we need to fire here? So we are having a exologic OC.hs script which we need to execute. So before, exu before uh, filling this script, we are having 30 compute nodes. Out of 30 compute nodes, we need to make one of the compute nodes a master and we need to move all the configurations files to that particular compute node and we need to execute that particular script. Now, before executing this script, we need to fill one of the configuration files that is given by Oracle which will be same across all configurations, whether it is a half, full, quarter and el underscore configuration dot ods file which we need to fill. So this file we need to fill with the domain name, country, time zone and at least one each IP required IP address for ILOM. So it is called as ITO0, NET0, NET1 or ILOM. So we need to give the subnet IP address and we need to specify one each IP address for a bond 1. So bond 1 is which is used for a client traffic and need to specify at least one IP address for it and at least one of each optional IP address of bond 0. So the bond zero is already been configured by Oracle. We need not to configure bond zero manually. By default, by the system itself, we will get uh, the bond zero itself. We need not to configure it. And we need to specify the NTP server IP address and we need to specify the name server IP address. Now what is meant by this name server which is used for NFS protocols and NFS versions? And we need to specify one at least one search domain and default gateway IP address. So once we fill this file, and we move the, after filling this file, we have to move to the specified location where it is a master node has been existing and which we have specified as a master node. And we need to give exologic deploy underscore configuration file and exologic underscore factory dot configuration file. Now, so once we execute the script, so exologic underscore factory dot configuration file will get invoked and it will check, it will do all the pre-verification tags before the configuration. So it will do all the pre-verification tasks. So once the pre-verification tasks done by the factory configuration file, so therefore it will go ahead for the deployment of all these configurations. So once the deployment is done, you will get a message that all the configurations have been completed. In the meanwhile, uh, when the configuration is happening, it will show the progress, like how many scripts are in the pending and what are all the uh, configurations have been completed and in which level the configurations have been completed, it's showing, it will be showing the progress when the script is being executed. So once the script is being executed, so therefore we can check the configuration whether it's been done successfully or not. Yes, 